What is going on world? What's up everyone? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new StarCraft 2 video. This one is between two of the best players currently playing StarCraft 2. Spawning here in the bottom right hand corner of Backwater LE playing with the red Zerg pieces. He's currently up in this series and wants to keep this series rolling in his favor. His name is Serral. And his opponent spawning in the top left hand corner of the map playing with the blue protoss pieces he's currently down in this series but certainly not out of it just yet his name is showtime so guys and girls game number two in this best of seven series that was played at the wcs in leipzig which by the way this series and this game that you are going to be watching in particular is um the grand finals of WCS Leipzig 2018 and I am extremely excited to see what happens here in game number two because game number one I gotta say was very much so a back and forth it could have it was like almost a toss-up between two of these players you know the question was you know who really has the advantage in that game number one and I gotta say I really felt at moment at, there were times where Showtime looked like he was gonna be you know, kind of uh, was going to be the victorious one. Then there were moments of Cyril, and, uh, you know, we're reminded all the time just how good Cyril actually is. I mean, guys, we are talking about the best player currently on the planet playing here, and, and he is, and there's just no question about it. Now, as far as Showtime is concerned, this guy is probably one of the best Protoss players currently playing on the planet. And, you know, I would say that the only argument against Showtime right now is maybe stats. And I, I really like Showtime, though. I really like his style of play, and I love his Phoenix play. I think it's the best currently in the world when you see him play with the Phoenixes. But that being said, guys, let's take a look at what our players are deciding to do here at the very early stages of our game. So Hatch Gas Pool Opener, a very standard for Cyril. He doesn't really go against really what he necessarily does generally speaking he does pretty much the exact same builds for the most part uh when it comes to the early uh earlier portions of the game whereas showtime tends to do exactly the same thing as well he is going to go ahead and get that gateway into the cybernetic score and then of course the natural nexus in the low ground and we are going to see now the warp gate is being researched as well as the zergling speed upgrade so both these players are going for the most standard upgrades that you know of those two races so very standard so far not really seeing anything completely out of the ordinary other than maybe the stargate but this is very common for showtime showtime will get the he of course gets the stargate out relatively early starts up those phoenix productions and then what he'll possibly do is add another couple of uh, stargates and that's where it gets very interesting and i hope showtime decides to do that because he did decide not to do that in game number one. Third base or third hatchery is going to be coming up now for Cyril and we're going to probably see here some zerglings are going to start to make their way across the map. We're also going to see another gateway try to kind of uh, close the gap so to speak against a lot of these uh a, lo a lot of these units now there is a dropper lord cocoon that i did miss out on and it does look as if Cyril uh has kind of been caught at least at this point in the game and this is what's so good about having those phoenixes out the dropper lord was going to drop some of those zerglings into the main base location and i completely missed that by Cyril, um making those you know the the dropper lord cocoon uh, that could have been very deadly against Showtime, who really doesn't have a whole lot of defense at this point in the game. Another Phoenix is being added, and this is where I am start I'm, I'm going to love this. I think I'm going to love this game right now, guys, because Showtime seems to be going for a good amount of Phoenix production at this point in the game. And he does this so well. He, If you are not careful... Showtime, if he, you know, gets, you know, start masses the amount, you know, phoenixes. So we're talking like five to ten phoenixes. This guy will take out your mineral line in a matter of seconds. Now, it does look like Cyril's playing this very, very cautiously. He is going to go ahead and he's getting the lair morphed in right now. And we are going to see 
uh, a, of course, a spore crawler in each of the bases. He has two coming up, though, in the third base location. Four uh, phoenixes are now out. And this is where it's going to get very scary for, uh, you know, for Cyril. He's going to have to be, you know, very disciplined here in his play against all of these Phoenixes. And Showtime, it's got to be the same thing. You've got to know when not to overextend. As I said, he is going to start to pick away, or I should say shoot away, at some of those uh, drones. He wants to, you know, get as much value as he can out of these phoenixes. And this is where he gets very, very scary, generally speaking. It looks like a forge as well as the robotics bay is going to be coming. So the robotics bay, guys, I really like this decision-making by Showtime. He's kind of mixing it up here in this game, and I really, really admire that decision-making. Now, got to be very careful. You do not want to just lose a bunch of these phoenixes, and it looks like one will go down. The lair is finished up. We, start, we also see that baneliness that is out. And now that uh, fourth base uh, expansion or hatchery is going to be coming in now for our uh, Zerg player. Third base, uh, third nexus, I should say, is going to be uh, coming in as well. Got to be careful. You do not want to lose all of these, uh, you know, at least even a few of those phoenixes uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Now, it does look like there... Are we going to see a little bit of a baneling bus, possibly? I don't think that's what we're going to see here. I would assume that these uh, Zerglings would be hiding if we were going to see somewhat of a Baneling uh, bust there. But that being said, these we, we got to keep an eye on these Phoenixes because they're going to continue some aggression, it looks like. Another Spore Crawler is now going to be coming in, and once again, he's going to try his best, that is Showtime, to... Uh, to get some more and more kills. And now we're starting to see the Colossus come out. I love the changeup um, by our Protoss player. Really trying to keep his his, uh, his Zerg opponent at home. Getting a lot of, you know, a few drones here, a few drones there. This is exactly the kinds of pickups that you want to get if you are Showtime. I love, love the decision making by Showtime so far in this game number two. Playing it brilliantly. Now let's talk about what we're seeing out of Serral. He's going to go ahead and get the Roly Poly upgrade. He's also going to be getting a Glial Reconstitution upgraded here by uh, for the Roaches. Now, it does look like these Zerglings were just trying to get confirmed when that fourth base was going to be going down. Centrifugal Hooks is finishing up, which of course, as I said, is the Roly Poly upgrade for the Banelings. And once again, this uh, this creep threat is starting to get kind of scary. It's starting to, you know, really start moving um, across the map, and this is exactly what uh, Cyril wants. But at the, you know, at the core of this game so far, at least what I'm seeing, I've seen, you know, I'm seeing for sure that. Cyril really wants to, you know, he's kind of wanting to get aggressive, and but he's then he's, you know, he obviously is getting worried about that, about that positioning. And Showtime is somewhat of the same. It seems that he wants to get aggressive with those, with of course the Phoenixes and such. But when it's all said and done, um, he wants to kind of play a macro focus game, and that is what we're getting right now, guys and girls. We are getting a macro focused game between two of the best players out there currently playing StarCraft II, and I absolutely love it. Uh, Nematized Carapace is going to be finishing up in less than five seconds, and once again, we're going to see a Dropper Lord. Um, and now with that uh, Nematized Carapace finished up, he's going to move a lot faster. Filled with Baneling. So we are talking about a Baneling, um, you know, a Baneling drop that could very well do substantial amounts of damage. And you got to be very careful here. These Phoenixes are going to see this Dropper Lord, or are they? He's got to be very quick here. Those Phoenixes are going to see it. They're going to jump right on top of it. Is he going to be able to get all of those off? The beautiful pickups by Showtime, and he is not missing a beat at this point in the game. It does seem like we are going to start seeing a little bit of a push out with some of these units. It looks like the storms are going to be coming in, and with these uh, Colossus in play, they are going to really uh, push away a lot of these units, and they're going to have, of course, a lot of uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna keep the distance between the Protoss and the Zerg player. Now, all this being said. Cyril is almost maxed out already. 
And at the, as this has all been going on, we are going to, you know, see a little bit of some Zergling run by us, but it does look like Sarah wants to go ahead and take this engagement right here and right now, and absolutely murdering this army is Sarah, who's going after all of these high tier tech units. Oh my god, beautiful play there by Sarah, who looks like he is, he is not planning on stopping. He it looks like he is going to start moving into that third base location. Cyril is absolutely showing us why he is one of the best current players, if not the best player to ever play this game. Here we go! It, he is going to start moving into that third base location. The question is, is there going to be enough here to hold on? This Colossus is doing so much damage against a lot of these units from a distance. Beautiful player. The Void Raids are pushing a lot of those units back as well. And somehow, someway, Showtime, what looked so bad for Showtime is now, uh, you know, he kind of is able to to kind of take, take a breather and uh, trying to recoup his losses. He's got the mothership that is on that production tab. And that mothership's going to be coming out. More and more void rays on that production tab as well. I love that decision making a lot. We are also going to see the Spire switch coming in for Serral. So, I, I gotta say, you know, we've passed the 11 minute mark in this game. And, you know, when I'm looking at it, 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 it does look still like a, you know, we, this game could go a while longer. I mean, you're looking at this and, and after, you know, seeing the incredible push there by Sarah and then the incredible hold in defense by Showtime, another Baneling run by, but it doesn't look like those Banelings are going to get any value. And that is exactly what... Uh, what Showtime wants at this point in the game. He wants to hold on as long as possible when all these upgrades are coming up. We have carriers now on the production tab. And the longer this game goes, I think Showtime has got a very good opportunity ahead of him. That being said, though, the Ultras are out. These higher tier Hive units are on that production tab. And we are going to see High Templar coming as well. The Swarm is at the front gates, essentially, of our uh, of our Protoss player. And it does look like, once again, the Zerg is going to start to move in. Going after some of those heights here. Uh, or at least over uh, out at these uh, a couple of these high units. That being, of course, the Cybernetic Square as well as the Gateways. And it looks like he is going to start to push in. That is, Serral is moving in. But as we are saying this, those, oh my god, the Colossus as well as those Void Rays are doing so much damage against this army. I gotta say, and really when you're looking at this, our Zerg player really got almost nothing. He really got nothing. He didn't get the Cybernetic Core. He didn't get really any high tier tech structures. He didn't get any gateways. So, so really when you're looking at this... I've got to say, I am loving the position Showtime is in. He's slowly climbing back into this game, and the longer this game goes, Showtime's army is probably just going to get scarier and scarier. Now, we are going to start seeing the Corruptors on that production tab, and that is most definitely what Serral wants to do. He, he needs to do that uh, for sure, uh, especially now that Showtime is getting another base. So this is going to be his fifth base. And once again, Serral's the one that's taken the fight to Showtime, which is not really how the, you know, wasn't the case necessarily in game number one. Now, here's the question. Is our Zerg player going to be able to get some of these tech structures? He is going to get that Cybernetic score, which is a nice pickup. He's also going to get, of course, a gateway. And he's got, you know, units that are trying to threaten, but really not doing enough for sure. Not really doing very much in the grand scheme of things not doing a whole lot now he is going to have a zergling run by that is going to take out uh that uh this uh, of course getting the cancel on that nexus that would be the fifth nexus we do see another hatchery going down for Cyril. so Cyril is planning on playing the late game he's also trying to really kind of keep this army in tabs though um Simply because the longer this goes, this army is going to be so, so scary. He's trying to find an angle. He is going to go right after one of those carriers. He's going to do exactly that, and he gets the kill on one of them. 
But once again, the question is, is, is he doing enough damage? It does look like some of those Corruptors are going to try to take the fight. But they are shooed away, at least at this point. And it's hard to tell, really, who is in the lead here. I mean, Cyril has a, technically speaking, he is ahead in the supply. But is that really, uh, is that, you know, since he does have some pretty, you know, heavy supply units, I wonder if that's something that we're going to have to kind of keep in mind as we're, you know, as we're moving forward. This creep spread, I've got to say, though, is really getting out of hand. The creep spread is just kind of moving all over the map. Uh, and, you know, as I said, you know, Showtime's playing very passively. He is, he is, you know, kind of allowing Showtime to control the pace of the game. And Showtime feels that he is confident in his ability to play defense. That being said, we are going to see a massive engagement. These Corruptors are going to jump right on top of this army, this high-tier tech army of, of, of course, carriers, but also of all those Void Rays. And just like that, a lot of those corruptors do go down, but the uh, and the mothership somehow, some way, stays alive. Wow! So Cyril figured that he would jump on top of that army, but somehow, some way, that army was not phased much. I mean, when you look at it, guys, from you know, for all of us from the outside looking in, you gotta say to yourself, there is just absolutely. Uh, that that you, that engagement should have went heavily in favor of Cyril, I gotta say. It should have went in favor of him. It didn't. And so uh, now we're seeing a switch here by Cyril. Once again in this game, he is going, of course, for the Infestors. And I like this decision a lot. Um, we are seeing those Air Armor Level 1, Air Weapons Level 1 is going to be finishing up as well for our Protoss player. He's going really heavy now uh, into those, you know those, uh, I should say air units, of course, um, and, and having, you know, this mothership is going to be so helpful, but once again, another push by Cyril as he starts to move in, it does look as if, uh, I don't think he's going to want to take this engagement though, but it does look like Cyril wants to, he wants to keep the pressure on because the economy of Showtime, before you know it, is going to be absolutely booming. And here we go. We have a couple investors that are now going to be out on the playing field. They are going to get that fungal growth. Beautiful play there. And it does seem like Cyril is just, he's playing this patient. And it almost feels like uh, Showtime is playing this almost too patiently. I mean, it, do, it really feels like Showtime is playing almost a little bit uh, too passively at this point. I feel that he really could do substantial amounts of damage to to Cyril because I'm looking at this and all of these bases are going up here for Cyril which is going to make this very difficult eventually for Showtime especially like when we're talking about expansions so on and so forth you know we pass the 18 minute mark what do you do in this event if you are the Protoss player but as I'm saying this there's a massive engagement here Beautiful fungal growth coming in on all those carriers as well as the void race and here we go once again somehow some way Showtime is moving on to the Zerg's turf and I guess you can't really say it's his turf But at the same time, you know this creep spread is just out of control So here we go a lot of these units are gonna start you know They're gonna start taking out a lot of the you know the creep spread the creep tumors and that's exactly what Showtime wants at this point in the game. Now you're going to have to be very careful. We're starting to see more and more High Templar as well as those Archons out. And the longer this game goes, it's going to become a very scary army for Cyril to, to really move into, I should say. Now, so we are going to see the 6th base going up for Showtime. But at the same time, you know, we're going to see 8... <laughs> Wait, so, so three, six, eight. Yeah, so eight bases for Cyril. I mean, he is on his eighth base. That is incredible. And once again, here we go. The Corruptors, they're trying to just slowly bleed the opponent dry. Gets the kill on that base. Didn't even, wasn't even able to get the cancel 
uh, for, uh, for sh uh, Showtime. Zergling run by is going to try to do as much damage as possible. Doesn't look like it's going to be a whole lot, but, you know, somehow, some way, it does seem like uh, our, our Protoss player is a little bit uh, preoccupied as those air le weapons level 2 is going to be finishing up now for Showtime. And this makes me a little bit nervous. The mothership is just kind of lingering. And you got all of these corruptors coming out, and you got to be so careful. You do not want to lose the mothership for practically free. And here we go. A lot of those corruptors are starting to move in slowly but surely, trying to take out a lot of these units. The storms do come down. But there are just so many corruptors, guys. There are just so many corruptors. They're going to go after what is actually the third base or fourth base location of the Protoss. It does look like he is going to be shooed away, at least at this point in the game. Once again, Cyril is multitasking so well. He is trying to just completely take over this game by bleeding his opponent dry and not allowing his opponent to really expand anymore. And here we go. It does look like, of course, a lot of these units are going to be taken out by a lot of the Ultralists as well as the Infestors. But once again, this air, air unit composition by Showtime is very scary. It is a really nice army composition, and we got to really keep an eye on that. And I, I keep keeping an eye on Showtime's mothership because I feel the moment the mothership goes down is the moment he may very well lose. And I'm really surprised at how passive our Protoss player has been, whereas, you know, how aggressive Cyril has been in this game so far. He has been absolutely, uh, just completely taking the fight to the Protoss player this entire game. He's been taking the fight to him, and before you know it, a lot of these bases are now being under fire, or one of these bases is under fire for Cyril, who is going to go down. But as I was saying, you know, there is just so much, you know, the Zerg is everywhere. Cyril is literally all over the map. He has so much creep spread. He has all of that vision. And here we go, out of position, as I was saying, and the mothership goes down. And that was exactly what I was afraid of. The mothership is just lingering a little bit too far away from the rest of the group. And now... Another mothership is is being queued in, but that that is such a you know that creates advantages now for Sarah, who has a booming economy. I mean, look at this economy: over seven seven point five thousand minerals, four point one k, four point one k gas. I mean, what what are you supposed to do about that? I mean, you know that is just absurd. Cyril is absolutely all over the place, and I, I'm, I'm now when that mothership went down, I am getting very concerned for Showtime. I, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I felt like this game was definitely Showtime's for very, you know, long stretches of the game. I really did. I felt that he had this game in his grasp, but somehow our Zerg player has just slowly climbed back in the game. He's taken over so many of these. Uh, he, he just, he's just, he's taking over the game, slowly but surely. And here we go once again. He's going to go after this fourth base. You do not want this base to go down. And it looks like just like that, the Corruptors are able to take out that fourth base. And, uh, you know, a lot of these units, the carries as well as the Void Raids, are slower units. And so it's, it's going to take him a little while to, to get into position. I still feel that Showtime is certainly not out of this game just yet, but as we are approaching the 24 minute mark, it's very, it, 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 this is a very, you know, this game has been very back and forth, but I feel, I, I feel concerned because of the, the vision that Cyril has. He knows exactly where the army is and, and that, that will create massive amounts of, of advantages for, uh, for the Zerg. Especially when you're talking about, you know, maybe trying to kind of start pushing out and start pushing across the map, um, or even splitting up your army, you know exactly where the Protoss' army is, so why not hit somewhere else? Um, and and th that, that can become, you know, some serious issues for, uh, for a Protoss player. Flyer Attacks Level 3 is going to be finishing up in less than 5 seconds. Air Armor Level 3 is going to be finishing up as well. And once again, another base goes down by... Uh, by Cyril. 
And so Showtime is starting to get into a little bit of a dilemma where he is, uh, he has to, you know, he's going to start to slowly but surely, uh, you know, lose out on, uh, you know, mining. Um, uh, you know, he's going to start running out of resources. And Cyril, who has such a booming economy, is, uh, is, 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 is just absolutely uh, doing so much damage. I mean, the amount of corruptors on the field is absurd. And, and I mean, this is exactly... This is exactly what the Protoss, uh, the Zerg player wants. And here we go. It does look like will Cyril take this, 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 uh, this engagement. I'm not sure if he's going to. I would not. If I was Cyril, I would not take that engagement. Uh, yeah, that would be a very scary one to move into. And we have three Void Rays on that production tab at a time. So when I start seeing the mass of Void Rays, which we haven't really seen a lot of for a while. I mean, probably what, guys, since maybe... Heart of the Swarm. I mean, you know, that was when they were really popular. And even, you could even say, uh, Wings of Liberty. But with the, I, you know, with the Legacy of the Void expansion, you don't really, you don't see a ton of Void Rays. You see them used every once in a while. But Mass Void Rays, man, that's taking you back. Shields level 3 finishing up just now for the Protoss player. And I gotta say, guys... With all this being said and done, look at how this game has shaped. We have... The Zerg had this, you know, top right-hand corner map. He had that map, and it was uh, destroyed and taken from him. And now we see, you know, a... Uh, we see both players taking their sides of the map, essentially. So you got all these bases at that this, you know, the bottom right-hand side, and then the top left-hand side is all Protoss. So we have got ourselves into a very interesting situation depending on who's going to attack first. And it does look like, here we go, Showtime very well might start pushing out. Or maybe not. Maybe he won't. This is a slower army. But I really think that there is a good possibility that our Protoss player might have the army capable of, 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 of overcome, overcoming his opponent. Three of the Corruptors are on the production tab right now for Cyril. And this is what we got to keep an eye on because, I mean, just look at the ungodly amounts of Infestors. I mean, these Infestors could, could you know, slow down this army composition of the Protoss in a matter of seconds. And then with those Corruptors, who are once again going to try... Uh, are they going to try? No, it doesn't look like it. He's going to start moving back. But this is this is exact. This is just this is textbook play by two of the best players in the world playing currently. Uh, I I love it. I absolutely love it. It is a lot of fun to watch, uh, for sure. Blink is coming in now, being researched for Showtime. Very interesting. Thirty-two Zerglings on the production tab. So that's very interesting. I wonder what Cyril is planning on doing. It looks like he wants to go ahead and maybe go for a, I don't know. Is he going to go for a timing? Or is he going to go for some sort of uh, push here at the 28, pushing the 28 and a half minute mark? Is he going to go across the map uh, and maybe try to do a little bit of some damage to one of these other bases? But they are pretty loaded on defense. So I'm not sure exactly what the plan is for Cyril. It does look like some of these Zerglings are going to start moving across the map, uh, but they're really only going to go after a couple of uh, uh, you know, a couple of pylons get a pro cure there. But that being said, they're going to be shut up down by all of these uh, Immortals as well as Archons relatively easily. But as I said, this air-based army is, is, is very scary. It's going to be a massive engagement when it does go down. It looks like the question that remains is, is Showtime going to move in or not? And it doesn't look like at this point he is very phased by Showtime, by Serral. He is not phased at all. We have three carriers on that production tab. We have eight more of these Corruptors. These two players are going to, are, they want to play the late game, the late, late game of StarCraft 2. We are going to see probably a massive engagement here shortly between these two players. 
and I'm excited about it. I really am because this is what it's going to come down to. It's all going to come down to the engagement. Who is going to have the better engagement uh, when it, you know, when it comes to this to this matchup? And here we go. It does look like he's just Cyril is just trying to test the water, so to speak. He wants to test our Protoss player. I like how the mothership is is back. You know, it's it's not vulnerable to be taken out very easily as of yet. But that said, I mean, we're kind of in a lull in the game because both players don't really want to engage one another. They just want to sit back and just max out a, a massive, massive army. So both players are nearly maxed out. I mean, Cyril's got 10,000, over 10,000 minerals. So that just tells you, I feel like his economy is just absolutely out of the, you know, off the chain right now. Um, he has such an incredible economy um, in, in the grand scheme of things. But it all comes down to this engagement that's about to happen. Or is it about to happen? I'm not sure if it's about to happen as of yet. But we are going to see, you know, more infested Terran coming forward, trying to do what they can. But no one, they're both kind of giving each other mad respect at this point in the game. They're giving each other the respect that they, they definitely do deserve. I will give it that. Both these players do deserve a lot of respect when it comes to the professional scene of StarCraft 2. And it does look like, here we go! It does look like, is Cyril finally going to jump on top of that army? And it doesn't look like he quite is ready to do so as of yet. There are a lot, a lot of spore crawlers. But at the same time, you know, the question lies in, you know, this is what Cyril does so well is the late game. I mean, he's so good at the late game and it does look like Cyril has possibly had enough. He is going to start to move forward and he's going to try to push into this base here near that top right hand corner of the map. And it looks like is Showtime going to move and do anything about this? Or is he going to sit here and allow this to happen? It does not look like he's going to have enough units in those. Oh, the beautiful fungal gross. Here comes all of those corruptors right on top of these void rays. The void rays are doing so much damage, though, to a lot of these units. Beautiful play by both guys so far in this game. The question is, is who's got the advantage? It looks like somehow, some way. Cyril may be taking a little bit of an advantage as all of these corruptors are moving around, taking out each and every one of these units. Oh, beautiful play here, but the question is, is it an overextension? Because once again, the Blink Stalkers trying to jump right on top of those corruptors. They're going to go ahead and jump right on top absolutely right again. And just like that, somehow, some way, Showtime is still in this game. Uh, just barely, uh, Cyril just proved to all of us why he is the grand champion and the best player on the planet right there. I mean, absolutely incredible play by, uh, by Cyril. I mean, he jumped on that army and he did incredible amounts of damage. I mean, he took away almost the entire army. I mean, essentially, um, th there's just not much that you can really say about it. And it does look like now, a lot of these, these tech structures are gonna be under substantial fire by the, the Zerg player. And Cyril, once again, is showing us why he is the current best player on the planet. And I think it's only a matter of time unless Showtime can pull a rabbit out of a hat because it does look like Cyril is now just absolutely taking over all of these bases going after so many of these high tier tech structures doing significant amounts of damage these zergling run bys and just the patience of Cyril has absolutely gotten the better of showtime in at least this game so far now there are still a lot of units that are coming out but the economy of Cyril is just absolutely through the roof he is doing um, he's got so much damage. We're starting to see the Broodlord switch, and this is this is where it's going to get so scary, guys. The Ultralist, Zergling, Baneling, Infester, Broodlord, and Corruptor composition. Uh, I don't think you can really go wrong with it. <laughs> I just, uh, 
I, 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 that's just what it is, man. I, I just think that it's absolutely incredible, uh, to say the least, how well Cyril has been playing. Um, it, you know, we've been seeing this guy for a while now. He is just absolutely all over the place. This is exactly what he does um, in all three phases of the game. Um, he is essentially the perfect player um, that, uh, that I could never be. That I would try to be and try to say that I am, but uh, not even close, guys. Um, this guy is, is on another level at this point, and, uh, and he's showing us why. He's going to get a base right next to the last really mining base of the Protoss. And it does look like the Broodlords are going to start to move in with those... Uh, Broodlings, they're gonna try to do as much damage as possible, really weaken this army as much as they can. The beautiful storms are coming in. A lot of these Broodlords are taking damage, but they are doing so much damage at the same time. The storms are absolutely on point, but just like that, Cyril, somehow, some way, once again, is just absolutely doing way too much damage against his opponent. And Cyril, once again, showing us that he is the best player currently on the planet. I hope you guys did enjoy this game between Cyril and Showtime. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive. And as always, I will see you guys all in the next one. Peace.